Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. This week's video, we're gonna be talking about 10 top items that you should know about brushless motors. Now, as you go through this video, if you believe that we're missing one item, make sure you add that in the comment section below. Now let's get started and take a look at our first item on the list. Number one is going to and has to be KV. It's a very popular specification that allows us to know some information about our brushless motor. More specifically, KV is a velocity constant that represent how much RPM that we get out of a brushless motor for every volt that we apply to that motor. This allows us to know maximum RPM of a specific combination between a battery pack as well as a KV option. Now number two is closely related to our first item and number two is going to be why does a motor manufacturer offer us all those different KV options? Well this ties into the fact that we have a bunch of different battery voltages that we can specify based on if we're operating it on a lithium polymer battery pack or a nickel metal hydride or any other chemistry. And motor manufacturers want us to be able to select a KV option that best suits the battery pack that we are planning to run. This combination is going to make the most ideal brushless motor power system. Number three on our list deals with turns versus KV. KV, as we know, is the amount of RPM per volt that we get out of a brushless motor. What does turns mean? Well, you're, you'll often see turns for specifically radio controlled car applications where motor manufacturers will place on their motor that there is a seven and a half turn motor or a 12 turn motor. And really what you have to know about these is as you go and increase the turn count, essentially what's happening is your KV of that specific motor is going down, it's being reduced. And as you go from one turn count to a lower turn count, there would be the opposite happening here where your KV is actually going up. Unfortunately, turn counts for us are not specific enough and don't tell us an absolute performance number that we can actually extract from our brushless motor. We don't know how much RPM this motor is going to deliver based off of a turn count alone. In other words, a KV specification is going to be far more superior than a turn count specification. Item number four is a good one and oftentimes a misconception with brushless motors. The KV value, if you go from one to a lower value of KV, this does not mean that you're gonna get more torque out of that brushless motor. What you are going to get from a motor that has a lower KV value is more torque out of the motor for every amp that you apply in the form of current to that brushless motor. Now, one thing that you do need to take into consideration consideration, especially when we're talking about comparing motors within the same motor size, physical diameter as well as physical length, is that a motor with a lower KV will have a lower value of current that it will be able to withstand. This is how a low KV as well as a high KV motor actually balance out when it comes to pure absolute torque coming from that specific motor class. Number five on our list talks about power output of a brushless motor. If you're looking for a brushless motor that has more power output, you can take a look at what we have here on the table. Odds are a larger motor, both whether it's in diameter or length for your brushless motor, is going to have a heavier influence on power output. For example, looking and comparing these motors on the table, it is quite wise to make the assumption that this motor may actually be the one that underperforms compared to the others, whereas the TP power motor is going to have the most amount of potential for power output. This rule is quite consistent within the RC hobby. Now we move into some of the more detailed areas of a brushless motor. Specifically, we're gonna look at the difference between an outrunner motor and an inrunner motor and where you would typically find these in the radio controlled applications. So if you can compare these two brushless motors in front of us, one of them is an inrunner and one of them is an outrunner. And it's actually quite easy to pick out the outrunner between these two. All we need to do is rotate the motor motor shaft and see the difference for each motor. If we take this brushless motor, we rotate the input shaft, we don't really see anything happening 
on this specific motor. Now if we do the exact same thing on our other brushless motor, we rotate the input shaft, we can see that the actual can of the motor starts to rotate. And we can rotate the can and at the same time our output shaft is spinning. This is known as your outrunner motor and you can identify that by the case actually rotating around the stator. Now there's a couple advantages that we get from each style of brushless motor. An outrunner will typically have a lower KV value for its relative size. However, it's going to impact the total amount of RPM that you can actually extract from one of these types of brushless motors. In general, I like to look at an outrunner versus an inrunner motor as comparing your typical gas engine versus a diesel engine. With the respect of a diesel, typically operates at a lower RPM. It does not necessarily mean that you get less horsepower out of a diesel engine, but it does tell you that it is much more difficult to get more power out of an engine that spins at a lower RPM. And that's because we're going to need more torque in order to get back the power that we're losing from a lower speed of a brushless motor. You'll typically find outrunner brushless motors in radio controlled airplanes, which is perfect application for them spinning a larger propeller at a lower RPM getting a good amount of overall wattage or power out of that system where you would use this inrunner motor for a vehicle that requires higher RPM like a radio control car or a radio control boat typically you'll be over 30,000 RPM in both of those applications. Item number seven on our list is comparing a censored motor versus a sensorless motor. This is a another detail with brushless motors and it's quite important because you may want to choose one versus the other depending on you what you're running. So typically a radio controlled airplane, helicopter or drone would use a sensorless motor. And this is known as sensorless as there's literally no sensors that will exist inside of the brushless motor. And the question here is what does that impact? Well it impacts the speed control. The speed control is not going to know where the motor's shaft is relative to the windings inside the brushless motor. And as a result, you may get some hesitation or the motor may not be perfectly synced when you start that motor up from zero RPM. And this is a problem known in the radio control hobby as cogging, where cogging is not the absolute most correct term used for this type of scenario playing out. Now there are a couple things that you can do to get rid of this type of synchronization issue and that is moving towards a censored system where the speed control now is going to be hooked up to sensors in the motor and those sensors tell the speed control where its position is. You are not going to get any type of hesitation on startup with this censored motor and this would be the perfect application for radio control cars and more specifically this would be perfect if your application in radio control cars is rock crawling where you're going to be running your radio control vehicle at very slow speeds trying to climb up rocks and at some cases or some points in your run you may actually come to a full stop to identify what's going on and then you need some very good control at low speeds to get that motor going again so that you can carefully climb up the next obstacle. Now the next item that you should know about brushless motors talks about the reliability and how we can actually control and maximize the reliability of our brushless motor. All of these brushless motors on the table operate within a certain temperature range. Now a lot of the times motor manufacturers will place the maximum temperature that they can operate on a specification sheet. If you don't have that specification sheet, often what I do is aim for the 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit mark. As you start to approach 160 or 170 Fahrenheit, this is where motors may break down and where they will break down is within the mega that is internal to the brushless motor. Once you have demagnetized the magnet due to heat, your brushless motor essentially becomes a paperweight. And this is how we're able to avoid this by measuring temperature. Now you can do that with a temperature gun such as the one that I'm holding here where you just need to know the temperature on the motor where it is the hottest and compare that against the maximum threshold of that motor. 
Checking motor temperatures frequently helps us maximize reliability. Now, if your brushless motor is getting hot, there is something that you can do. And you can see all these different gears here on the table. This here is our smallest and this is the largest. If this is the gear that you're running on your specific brushless motor, all you need to do to reduce the temperature that it's operating at is start to try out smaller pinion gears. Smaller pinion gears is going to lighten the load of that motor making certain that it draws less current and then you'd be able to drop the temperature of that brushless motor. Just make sure that you're using your temp gun and confirming that this is happening to again maximize the reliability of that system. Number 9 and 10 on our list talk about things that you should avoid doing in order to not destroy your brushless motor. Number 9 is avoid cutting the wires on your brushless motor if you don't know if it's safe to do so or not. Checking these motors on the table out, it is very wise to avoid cutting because some of the winding terminations that exist inside the brushless motor can actually exist and be terminated outside. If I were to cut the wire right here, I can actually destroy the motor by destroying the winding termination, even though I solder a new connector or whatever the case is to that section of wire. My recommendation is whatever the factory length of wire is on your specific motor, leave it at that size unless you know for certain that you can alter it. And the last item on our list, number 10, talks about the fasteners that we use on our brushless motor to mount it into position on our radio control vehicle. If you don't do this right, there is a possibility that you can destroy your motor before you even turn the motor on. One good example is comparing these two motors. If you look at this brushless motor specifically, through the holes in the case, you can see the copper windings. If I were to use a fastener on the front of this motor face, I can actually drive that fastener right in so that it touches the windings inside of this brushless motor. And if I do that, I'm going to scrape the enamel off of those windings. When the enamel of those windings is removed, from the fastener, there is risk that you can now short out the windings of your brushless motor. And if you do that, you essentially render your brushless motor as a paperweight. Some motor manufacturers recognize that this is an issue and what they do is they actually place a material so that you cannot very easily get to the windings. Otherwise, what you can do is just check the length of your fastener. You only need to let the fastener go in about three or four millimeters inside the brushless motor. And what you can do is you can actually check this by taking a fastener, running it into the brushless motor and making sure that whatever length that you need there does not and it will not actually contact the windings or even some of the material that has been placed in here so that you do not get the fastener into the windings. You want to avoid making contact with that fastener of everything inside of that motor. Well guys, that pretty well does it for our 10 items. I'll throw another bonus item there as well. One thing that you should know about your brushless motor is that a lot of these sensorless motors, it doesn't matter which orientation you actually plug the motor to your ESC in. Chances are, if you get the orientation wrong, the motor may just be operating in the reverse direction. Now, in order to change that, you can go into this software and reverse the direction of your brushless motor. If you want to avoid getting into the software programming within your electronic speed control, you can do this physically by just swapping two of the three leads of your brushless motor, and that will physically reverse the direction of the motor as well for you. Well, guys, hope this all helps out. If you have anything in addition to the 10 items plus the extra bonus item there, leave that in the comment section below. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.